I'm Delta Work, and it's time for Very Delta. Very Naomi Smalls is here, but first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off! M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who sometimes needs a little finesse, and sometimes she needs a lot. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. I think it's time for the factory to add some new cheesecake flavors to the menu. I am a major fan of actually eating cheesecake at the Cheesecake Factory. Well, I'm a major fan of buying it and taking it home and eating it because usually whatever I order, I'm going to eat a ton of. And whatever bread is there, I'm going to ask for four or five bowls. You know, we had Evan here. We talked about bread. We don't need to go over the bread anymore. We need to go over the namesake of the factory, and that's the cheesecake. I love all the flavors. There's probably not one that I would turn down. My personal favorite at all times, the default, the number one for me is the pineapple upside down cheesecake. I live for it. I love it. I love the texture. I love how much sweetness there is. I love getting that really cool container that prevents the cheesecake from falling over. Although I will say, I feel like the shape of that container lends itself to hold a fork inside of there so that they don't have to give you a separate fork, right? I feel like just along the backside, there could be sort of a little indent of sorts that you snap a fork into. That way you don't have to ask for one. And if you're door dashing this or you're ordering it from any delivery service, you don't have to get your cheesecake like I did recently in Palm Springs and have to eat the cheesecake with my hands. Like, listen, I am not uh, a stranger to eating with my hands. I'm totally all for that. But I feel like, listen, you if you're going to spend $10 for a piece of cheesecake, I feel like I need a fork. I feel like it's fine. And if you've gone through the effort of creating this thing to hold the cheesecake up so it doesn't fall over, why not go the extra mile and figure out a way so you can snap a fork in there? Then no one has to worry about asking for a fork. You won't have to uh, leave any of your customers dissatisfied. All the diners will be happy. All of the deliveries will be happy. This is perfect. So this is something to consider in order to make the uh, cheesecake experience at the factory next level. I mean, elite service. This is exactly what we need to do. But these flavors, again, tons of flavors, a lot of them based in chocolate because people love chocolate. People love that mixed with cheesecake. It's like a universal thing, like strawberries on top of your cheesecake. Even if you don't order strawberry cheesecake at some other place, they're always going to garnish it with a strawberry or some cherries because it's just, I don't know, courtesy. It looks pretty. Of course, it does taste great. But I would love to see a couple of new flavors. And one that I love, because I love the flavor profile of orange, is a 50-50 bar cheesecake. So I would love to see that sort of like, maybe you use gelatin, like orange gelatin as the flavoring. Maybe there's an orange peel. And listen, you don't have to order um, extra ingredients really for the factory for the garnish because... You have a full bar. You've got to have citrus uh, at the bar. So you could like get a little orange peel, stick that on there, maybe a dusting of powder. A fi- Everyone loves a 50-50 bar. If you're not familiar, it's an orange popsicle, right, with two sticks in it that you can separate. And uh, in the middle is just some innocuous white cream. This could be the cream that could be on the cheesecake. A 50-50 bar cheesecake sounds de 
delicious. We have to have that on the menu. We can introduce that for spring, summer, I believe. I think for fall, I'm talking like early fall, uh, all the way through the winter, we really need to consider a pistachio flavored cheesecake. I'm thinking absolutely, definitely, definitely, definitely that mid-century medical tile green. Like that color is so pretty to me. It's vibrant. And then a dusting, a beautiful dusting of uh, of pistachio dust with a few actual pistachios. Not the old school red pistachios that were dyed. Why were those even dyed back in the day? Why would you dye a pistachio red for no other reason? There had to be a reason for that. Maybe it was just to see who was stealing pistachios. That could be. Um, but I definitely think this pistachio cheesecake has to have actual pistachios in the flavoring, but also in the texture. I'd love to see sort of a chopped pistachio on there and the dusting. That would look really, really beautiful. Um, another flavor that I think is going to be met with some opposition, but I don't think needs to be. I think you need to calm yourselves when you listen to this. Um, ambrosia cheesecake. Now, I don't know what ambrosia means to you, but I know what it means to me and what it should mean universally. Ambrosia salad is a, obviously a type of fruit salad usually made available, not as, as a, as a ambrosia, ambrosia is a fruit salad usually made available as a side dish, not always as a dessert, but as a regular side dish alongside savory items, at least in my family at Thanksgiving. And it's made with Cool Whip, pistachio pudding, instant pistachio pudding, uh, fruit cocktail, mandarin oranges, and, um, oh shit, what's the other, marshmallows. We put marshmallows in it. Usually the white marshmallows, but you can do the, the confetti colored ones if you like. Uh, just depends on how fun you want it to be. I have elevated my ambrosia salad to include only, don't move. I have elevated my ambrosia salad to only include marshmallows, Cool Whip, instant pistachio pudding, diced canned peaches that I have to dice myself because they only come in slices and I want them small, and mandarin oranges. I don't like fresh apples in mine. I do not like pineapple in mine. I love pineapple. I love apple. I will save apple for the Snickers salad. I don't want apple in my, and I don't want any coconut. I don't want any kind of coconut inside the ambrosia salad. If you're making ambrosia salad at your home and you make it with vanilla pudding and or you make it with coconut inside of it, you can go ahead and continue to make it wrong for your family. That's absolutely fine. But as for my family, we walk with Betty Crocker. We march with the Lord and we make our ambrosia salad properly. Now, I will make it with fruit cocktail for everyone, which has cherries and all that stuff in it. But if I'm making it for just myself and a handful of people, I'm going to limit it to peaches and mandarin oranges. That's just for me. That's just how I'm going to do it. That's the only fruit I'm going to put into it. Now, once we've established that the ambrosia salad is going to be made this way with pistachio pudding exclusively... Then we can introduce that as now an additional flavor profile throughout the year as an ambrosia salad cheesecake or just ambrosia cheesecake. And this is going to include all of those textures in there. But really, it could be the pistachio pudding like the other pistachio one by itself. By the way, if you just only want to take one of these recommendations, I'm fine with that. I'm fine of you're obviously you're going to take the uh, the orange creamsicle like that's that just goes that's not up for discussion. The one we are going to discuss is maybe you don't want an, on the menu at the same time two pistachio ones. But listen, you have like 10 chocolate ones. So you could have both of these pistachio, one exclusively pistachio, one profiled with marshmallow whip with fruit pieces inside of it. This is all 100% possible. It should be probable. This really, really needs to happen. These three flavors 
I think are something people are going to go wild for. They're going to be excited for. I think they're doable within what you already offer on the menu at Cheesecake Factory. The factory workers, in fact, our collab actually will call be called Factory Work. Do you hear it? And it can be our separate menu, the Factory Workers menu. That is the collaboration of Cheesecake Factory and Delta Work. The very factory worker menu. We will have cheesecakes available. I have other flavor profiles of dishes as well, but I really want to focus exclusively on these three flavors that I think people will go wild for. I have people will, who will, I have people who will co-sign on this. People of consequence, people who are customers, people who are ready to take factory work to the next level. This special menu is going to be geared towards everyone who is very, if you are a very Delta listener, this is for you. If you're a very Delta YouTube talk show uh, viewer, this is for you. This is what we really need, I think, right now. And we need this throughout the year. It doesn't need to be just a seasonal item, but I feel like I'm fine with us launching this as a a seasonal thing. And I know we can't do it right now, but you know what? We have plenty of time before the holidays to start this conversation and introduce this. And on this menu, you know, you can identify yourself as a very Delta listener, a very Delta viewer, uh, and you'll get special, special deals with this. You know, on your birthday, you could get a discount, if not a free piece of cheesecake of your choice. It could be pistachio. It could be ambrosia. It could be uh, pineapple upside down. It could be any of the flavors, or maybe we go so far as to create our own profile because they have a celebration cake, but we could have the very, very birthday celebration cake. I feel like that's coming as well. The more we talk about this, the more we develop it. And if you're listening or watching and you're commenting, come up with your ideas. Like, let us know how we really need to put this into action and it needs to happen. We're talking about coupons, we're talking about birthday recognition anniversary recognition. Uh, We're talking about QR codes where you can scan and find out about secret merch and secret menu items that only people who are very, very will know about. And these are things that you'll know about. You may get that piece of merchandise. You wear it, someone spots it, and you know that they are very, very Delta. I love this idea. I know you're on board with it too. Let's bring on the cheesecake. We love all the flavors. We want to help make it grow. We are factory workers and we want to make it happen. Do you want to see me take a break? I think you want to see me take a break. After the break, Naomi smalls. It's very Delta. That's the tea. Our guest today is back in Los Angeles after years in Las Vegas, and she needs no introduction. She's the one and only Naomi Smalls. Hi, Delta. Hi, gorgeous. Thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Huge fan. No, I'm a huge fan. But before we do any of that discussion, can you like turn to the camera? This is going to be your camera. Uh And can you say, I am very Delta. I am very Delta. A thick. Oh my God, it was so good. <laughs> that is so good. Okay, but we know each other from like a long time ago. Yes. And this is interesting because I think a lot of people are, aren't are aware of like how connected a lot of people are because they, they think that people only know each other from Drag Race. Right. But they know each other from other places. Obviously, um, I worked for many years in what people call the Inland Empire mm-hmm. where you've spent so much time. The 909. Yeah. And so when I think of like my connection to you, like I I think of like Raven, I think of VIP, I think of all of those places. There is something that is quintessentially Californian, especially Southern Californian, Del Taco. I know, Del Taco. You have to give me your Del Taco order. Okay, my Del Taco order. Specifically, I mean, I love the crinkle cut fries. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, a fry with texture is like, I'm all about it. I am like a carb fiend. Okay. But at Del Taco, I do not like that they put it in the, the large is in that big cup. Thank you for saying this. I hate how they get moist on, on top of each other. Tell I us. hate that. Like the condensation like melts the fry. Mm-hmm. I like it crispy. I like a crispy fry. So if we're gonna do the crinkle cut fries, I will get a medium 
And if I'm because I put it in that little basket with yeah. the paper. Yeah. And I that just just so much better than world's better. A large cup. So I like I do the medium fry and I I'm do so grateful two, red two red burritos. Two I red like burritos. I like that. I like that. cheese, red burrito. Okay, this is a very similar order to me. Um, cause I see, I don't understand, although I do order the large, but now you're making me think that this is gonna be a better way. Um, I don't understand what this theory is behind like they get the napkin and then they use the napkin to cover the fry, uh -huh. which I get it. They don't want to put their hand on it. I do appreciate that. Yeah, germs. But who wants to get all the napkins and grab them out of the thing, wad them up and then shove them on the bag so that everything steams? What is that? No, I don't like that. That it, is so gross. I hate a soggy fry. I do too. You know? I do too. Do you know what a stoner burrito is at Del Taco? That's when they stick the fries inside, right? I so I've and always... I grew up thinking it was called a golden burrito. Oh, I have not heard golden burrito. I didn't know it was called stoner burrito. Well, I had always heard it just called go bold. Okay. So you can go bold on any item there, which means that they'll put a few fries and um, their secret sauce, that whatever that white sauce is, but mm -hmm. it's ranch or cream or what it is. But I was asking this guy the other day about it that works there, and he was like, no, it, uh, people just call them stoner burritos if they get it in a bean and cheese. Okay. I do love that their burritos are, like, open-based. But what's the uncut part? <laughs> like, what's that part? You don't like the extra skin? I, 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 don't, I, I personally don't mind, but I like to push it and work that, like that, so it goes all the way up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like the bag has to – it's almost like a fragile – package because the uh -huh. bag has to stay up when they're open-ended yeah. like that. Do you eat at Taco Bell? You know, I've never had Taco Bell. Wait, what? I've never had Taco Bell. How is that possible? I've just never. I think that growing up, my mom was just like, because we were like big fast food because there's like 12 of us. So mm -hmm. she would like always go in and out of drive throughs you know, mm -hmm. but um, we never did Taco Bell. And I, I know that they didn't have chicken strips and they didn't have French fries, right? Yeah. So like I was not interested. Yeah, their chicken's not good anyway. Okay. Um, but I just recently heard your um sloppy seconds episode uh -huh. where you mentioned Baker's. Baker's is so bomb. Baker's is the only. It's so bomb. It's the only, and I know Big Dipper went to like try a few items, and he seemed to like he was fine with them. But I need you to be like excited about the items from bakers because they are sickening but the problem is i feel like it's a little bit like um i think it's a little bit rude that the they size them according to gender yeah you're right you're right so the mama meal is medium and then the papa meal is larger yeah why, why would they still do that in this day and age i don't know but i did kind of feel pussy that i would always get a mama meal number four it is you know. a little bit like i'm not gonna eat that much <laughs> I'm gonna have, can i have a diet water but it was so i mean the chicken sandwich with the i used to love their shakes oh i don't think i've had a shake there but i, I know i'd like it like they had like a a lot of flavoring so mm -hmm. you get like a chocolate shake and then you could add like banana flavoring to it mm. so it's like kind of like a, a frozen chocolate yeah, banana which i loved it. That. I loved Baker's. I used to like go, I think they closed at like 11 p.m. And I would like look at the clock and be like, I think I have enough time at like 10.55 to like zoom uh -huh. over and be that annoying bitch at the last, like, you know, yeah. probably getting the cold fries and shit, but it was worth it. I like to hit up the one that's just like where the 10 and the 60 split when you're coming back from Palm Springs. There's like Ooh. a McDonald's, a Baker's and like a Popeye's in that area. Is that Kukaipa? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that one. That's usually like, because... Uh, I will only really get Baker's if I'm out that way. Obviously, there's not right. really an, I, or maybe there are some in LA. I don't know. I think the closest one to here is at the Ontario airport. Okay. So like right off of Archibald on the 10. I mean, that's not that far. It's, I mean. I'm, I'm not going to go there just to eat. Right. I need like, to be out that way. Anyway. Yeah, it's like going to be part of your route. Right. But what are you going to get there? If you get there, what are you going to eat? Well, I think Dipper went like for morning uh -huh. and I don't, I'm not like a bit, I like, I love, that's like the only meal I actually like to cook is breakfast. Uh -huh. um, so if I'm going to go there, it's probably going to be like midday or like at night and uh -huh. I'm probably going to get a chicken sandwich. Oh. <sighs> yeah, I'll get a chicken sandwich, a large fry. I'll probably get a mama meal and like push it up. You know, when you can like make it bigger. Yeah. 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 I think that, yeah. And a, I think and I a like Sprite. That. Have you had their uh, beef burrito? I haven't. It's just like ground beef and cheese. Okay, I'm going to be. I'm into it. I'm into it. <laughs> um, when you were in Las Vegas, how was eating in Las Vegas different than eating here, would you say? You know, it's so random because we were just talking about Southern California and Del Taco. There was a Del Taco in my apartment building 
parking structure. Del Taco. I think that they're expanding yes. their audience now. Your parking lot. Yeah, no. Yeah. It was wild. Whoa, <laughs> I'm into this. My apartment building was... I'm moving to Vegas. <laughs> on the Strip, pretty much. Okay. It was like right by the Rio and the Palms. Uh-huh. So it's like over the bridge, but it's like right there still. Uh-huh. Um, there was a Walgreens, a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, I know where you're at. I know where that was. A yeah, Del yeah. Taco and a uh-huh. Wahoo's Because you hit all that up before you get on the freeway coming home. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. while you fill up your gas tank. Yep. Mm-hmm. I know where that is. Go up the street. When you were performing like Riverside, Pomona, like that whole area, what kind of baby queen would you would you say you were? Oh, heavily inspired baby queen. Yeah. I definitely was like a observer. I probably was like, I didn't necessarily know it, but I was like that girl who was like, just oh, uh, duct tape was my best friend. Mm-hmm. Like, I only felt pussy if I was like taped, you know? Right. Um, I like to show a lot of body. I didn't necessarily even think that not like me not wearing pads was like a punk rock thing or anything. Like I wasn't trying to go against, I just felt like my drag persona Mm -hmm. was not a padded girl. So I didn't really get into it. And then honestly, the times I've been padded have been the most uncomfortable experiences and not even like uncomfortable with the look. It's like just uncomfortable. Like the tights, the layering, they're so annoying. Yeah, the layering, the... Well, I think it's interesting because, like, so many people um, uh, have this impression that, like, the only way to do... Like, we all have our our philosophies, right? Mm -hmm. And there's, like, this school of thought that, like, I can't believe this person doesn't pad. And then the the people that are very padded now oftentimes, like, won't put any tits in. Right. And I'm like, so what? What? what is it? Like, what, what? You can have, you're mad because they don't have hip pads on, but you don't have any titties on. Right. And then they have titties on, but they're mad that you don't have any pads on. And then you're mad that somebody's all about duct tape or you're mad about, it's so weird. Like, there's not really a way, I feel like it's all fine. Like, there's not one philosophy of what a quote unquote, like, feminine form is supposed to be. Yes, but I do feel like it should make sense. You know? Like, I feel like if there's going to be a hip in, there should be a tit in. No, no, I agree. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I agree. But, like, it's interesting how many people will, like, die on the hill that, like, I don't have to wear tits. Right. Women don't wear, but you're dying to wear hips. Yeah. But you're, like, so denouncing titties or whatever. It's weird. My thing is give them, like, two years. And they'll uh-huh. see the, they'll see it. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, you you look like an hourglass from the front, but once you turn to the side, it's like, whoa, right. what's, something, right. something's hollow. It's weird, because pe- some people, I don't, I don't think some people will, like, fully look at themselves 360 or, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Teasing the back of a wig or something and, and then being like, well, the front looks good. Like, I'm a fan, like, I'm a huge fan of camera, like, making it, like, cheat it for camera. Uh-huh. But, you know, if people have to see you in person and you have to turn around and right. they're like, what is this wall of hair? And then you walk to the side and there's nothing there. I mean, drag really does. The fact that I'm being shot from the side right now, woo! I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Because we paint. We, like when we're in the mirror, we're just painting so like, trying to make everything so symmetrical that we kind of forget about the perimeter I a bit. I not agree. I, you know, and I learned that, uh, I first heard that and then sort of digested it from Magnus Hastings mm. who uh, took pictures one time and and I kept turning and turning and turning and he was like you know uh, we weren't like dear friends he was doing it as a favor and he said um, you know you're painting for dead on so that's what we need to do here if you do this from the side people are going to see these lines you're creating that you're trying to soften you know you create you know that's the thing for sure but then it becomes a whole other philosophy in taking a picture if you want the profile. You're like, okay, well, this is going to have to be sweetened up, which I think, you know, I'm a firm believer in sweetening up a picture. Oh, absolutely. And I don't think it's necessary to, re- to replace something, but I do think it's to sort of imagine it the way that it did look in person. It's just not resonating on camera. It's like at a restaurant when they are going to plate a thing of spaghetti, they're not gonna just going to go, you know, like right. put it on the plate. They're going to like... Put it in a perfect circle, put some garnish on it. It's just like right. the final steps of making something presentable. And that's our makeup, that's our hair, mm-hmm. that's just life. Well, I mean, and, and it's like so many, like when you go into another realm of of presenting yourself during the pandemic, like I was, you know, doing Instagram live and I always had my ring light up here, my camera up here. And so I was always here, right? And I would always be sure to take a picture and then post the picture. And then when we started doing the podcast, it's a little bit different because the camera is 
getting you the way people would see you. Right. Not the way that you're going to necessarily sweeten that that angle. And that's why, like, whenever there's gigs that come up, like, I mean, listen, I love the idea of, like, the the Roscoe's viewing party. I think it's Uh sickening. I think it's fierce. I think people can let loose. And I would love to be part of that. I cannot put myself in the position of sitting on a lawn chair and having (laughs) everyone look at me like this. I'm not going to put them through that. Like, I just don't see myself doing that. And so I'm like, if and when the time came or people were like, hey, would you like to do this? And I'm not saying anyone's asked me, but if they did, I would feel like I would have to be like, I'm not a fit for that because, you know. I don't like people looking like that. Like you perform in big stages, like at, at Vegas Live. They're seeing you head to toe, and they're they're definitely seeing like and they're angle. seeing you there. Yeah, baby, I don't want anybody to see me. In nobody's <laughs> uh, nobody's uh, squatty pleaser, clear heel <laughs> with the toe like this. Like you've got your legs done, you've got gorgeous pumps on. Like you're aware of what people are looking at. And if anybody said to you, like, "Oh, are you comfortable the whole time?" Well, probably not. Yeah, I no, mean, not at all. You're asking a lot out of it. But that's the thing. When you're in these stages, you have to like probably negotiate like what does our lighting look like at this new city? Like when For you go sure. on the tours, right? For sure. I'm about to do the Work the World Tour yes. this year. I'm going to – I'm doing the North America leg and I'm also doing the Asia-Australia leg. Oh, wow. And every – I mean, it's kind of crazy. I'm officially like the oldest girl on cast. What? I you're know. the baby. I know. It happened so fast. I always think of you as the baby. <laughs> I know. I feel like when I was – uh like fresh off a of drag race, I was like 21. So mm-hmm. when people would be like, "Oh my god, that's my mom," I'd be like, "Girl, shut the fuck up." Yeah. Now, I, like, I kind of feel like when I see these like <clears throat> little young queens that are I know have taken inspiration and everything, I'm mm-hmm. like, "Damn, I feel like a mom a little bit," right? Which is fitting because we're at mom. Yeah. Pod. Yeah. No, truly. <laughs> I mean, I I I feel like that sometimes. Like, um, when newer queens will like share in a conversation, like recently we're talking about music or something, and then they like brought it, brought up like how I felt about something. And I started like sh- sharing and I realized I was oversharing. Like, well, I remember. <laughs> Back at peanuts. And I could, yes. And I could see in their faces kind of like, we were just trying to include you. Like, what, <laughs> you're good. Like, and then I realized like, I think I'm one of those older queens that. I used to sort of look at like, ugh, sick. What are you even talking about? Like, this is my art. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And now I'm that. I am she. Like, yeah. it's scary. Now we're like, where's your tits, bitch? It's scary. <laughs> and if the baby is saying that, girl, I'm like generationally somewhere fucking else. Well, I think that I keep say, I keep saying this recently because of the new season that's on right now and it's on MTV and everything. But I kind of feel like we have some street cred. Okay. Yeah. Logo. Yeah. Single digit girls. Yeah, that's true. That's you know? true. That's true. And I'm very proud of that because that's it was true. just a lot. It was just a different time. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I know I was on like the later end of it, but still like I'm so happy that I started the whole drag world yeah. from that time. Yeah. And not to say anything bad about this time. It's just like an experience I don't relate to. Right. Right. I agree. I, I think that when I see... Um, uh, you know, there's like this particular seasons, like people are is very people are very critical about it. Um, drag being uh, people that are included that are b- presented only digitally or this way or that way. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, for me, if that's sort of the way that drag is going and that's how it had to be absorbed and that's how people capitalized off it. Good for them. Like I, I they're doing so, there's many girls that, that are doing something that I couldn't do and I don't understand. For instance, like a TikTok presentation. If people are very well versed in that, that's something that I could learn from because they're obviously uh being recognized, they're obviously doing something cool, they're obviously when people are shopping for something sort of corporate, they might say like what what is their digital footprint? Like mm-hmm. what does that look like? Because that's what we're that's how we're marketing. For sure. Can they get in front of a camera and comport themselves in a certain way? Or do we want somebody who has like all this nightclub cred, which in the nightclub format, those girls are going to flourish. It's going to be a lot less money sometimes. The, the thing is, you have both. Well, I would hope so. You absolutely hope I would both. hope so. Do you feel like over COVID you've got like a really good practice? Yeah. Of I like do. I do. I feel like I got a lot of people that would listen to me. And um, I mean, I got as much out of it as anybody else. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I I didn't ever feel like I was doing anything on Instagram live other than like passing the time. 
Mm. You know what I mean? But there were people that were like, hey, like, this is something we can all do now. And so there's other people that did the same thing in other ways. And I would like participate with them. And it was kind of like a giant worksheet. I feel I feel like this is I feel like that was a worksheet to get here. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is essentially a worksheet for like my regular life. Like I'll come up here and, compl- you know, Naomi, <laughs> I will just complain about whatever. It's kind of like being in the shower and going, oh, if this bitch tells me this, you know what I'm going to say to her? I'm Because I'm that person, right? Yeah, me too. I'm having all the fights. Uh-huh. My inner monologue right. is like when I'm solo. Or, or I'll get on Instagram and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to post this in my story. And then I'll type it all out. And then my partner, Davey's like, and what happened? I'm like, I didn't post it. Right. And he's like, why not? And mm-hmm. I said, because I just needed to get the words out. Yeah. And now I'm done with it. You know, like I was talking to my producer, Mark, and we talk about like, what are some things you want to talk about or we're going to bring up? And I'm like, I need to talk, fucking talk about it. <laughs> and then and I'll send it. And I realize that's not realistic. Like, yes, it's something you're bothered by. Right. I'm sure for you, when you when you do shows like you work with so many different personalities. Oh, for sure. There's people that you might be bothered by or you're like, I don't see this behavior. Uh huh. And there's times where you're like, this is the hill I'm going to die on. I'm going to say something this time. Yeah. I'm a I'm very passive though when it comes to that situation. Like as long as I can like show up, do my job, and collect the paycheck, I'm pretty happy. It's I get really pissed off when it's like we have to do like those group meet and greets and stuff like that. Mm. And either someone's making everyone wait or they just choose not to do it that day. That shit. Choose not to do it. Yeah. Well, that's an option. Apparently, when there's no like. Uh, repercussions. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People are scared of drag queens, I've realized. I have learned, I learned very, I, I would I would like to say I learned early on, but I learned definitely within the past like five years that there are promoters, there are producers, there are people in general who know that they're never going to really be with Mariah Carey. They're never going to really be <laughs> with uh, whoever's whoever the big name is. So, they don't mind being treated like shit because they think like, well, that's the way a diva is. Yeah, it's a star. That's that's star power. Mm-hmm. And so they'd rather be shit on than work with people who are really ca- like really casual, professional, on time, don't really have too many expectations, take care of their own fucking food, buy their own cigarettes, like do right. all those things. Uh, don't drink all the alcohol and act a fool because to them that's homespun. Right. I don't need that. I need to see the diva. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was such a great night. Yeah. She ripped me to shreds. Yeah. Yeah, none of that. Can you believe what I went through? We had so-and-so from Drag Race. It was crazy, but I survived. And it's like, well, there's a ton of other people that are going to give you that, and you're not going to get the headache. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll, ju- I'll, I- I'll jump in the shuttle to get myself back to the airport. You don't have to fuck with me. Some people thrive on chaos, though. They love it. They love it. The queen, the promoter, just some people just love the, yep. the headache. Of getting on stage. I agree with you. I don't really feel like a diva like that, though. Do you eat pirouettes? Yes. Would you like to take a break and have one? Let's do it. All right. Let's take a break. She ate it on the runway and left no crumbs. We are back with today's guest, the gorgeous Naomi Smalls. Hi. How did you do it? Do you do that a lot? I don't know. I just, it kind of just like came over me. It was natural. Yeah. It it was in the moment. What do you do when you're like being Um, intro? I I don't know, but I, what I don't, what's hard to, uh, do I do that? Do I do that? It's, it is called port of bois, right? I don't know. What is it? (laughs) It's like how your fingers extend and like. I love that. Act. Well, you know. And spell out what you're doing. You you remember Dolly Levi from Uh here in LA. Dolly Levi always told us Tony Tell Queen. Uh huh. She always told us about um because we used to do fantasies in Riverside. We still do. Dolly is not part of it um because she's busy doing other stuff. But she always choreographed. And whenever they would have what they called the cape girls or the like the goddess girls that came out in the beginning, they would like put their hands up at the end and she would say, "Uh uh-uh. uh, circus showgirl love." Sir- and we were like, "Oh." Like that was just like, Clown. it felt like a piece of information Doll. that you knew that like you could just like be cunty. And like when you ever, you were somewhere where Dolly wasn't and, and you, people didn't know you were like, Oh girl, no girl. I'm show girl. <laughs> I don't do that. Um, Where's your towel? Why aren't you standing on a towel? You have to stand on a towel. I have one in my suitcase. Love. I know I have, you have to have it. And the oatmeal. 
And the oatmeal. No oatmeal. Oatmeal has saved me. Oh, of I all Chad Michaels. stand by oatmeal. Chad Michaels taught me that, and it has. I've always. Have you ever drank um uh, or eat? Have you ever eaten your food with makeup brushes as chopsticks? The chopsticks. You have to try it. <laughs> I I do need to try it. I honestly would probably just down it like a smoothie instead, though. Just throw just it. Just like out. you know, if I didn't have the utensils. Do you sometimes? This is something I've never asked anyone, but I think about this. Do you sometimes get like um um Speak people by a barding? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do people ever gift you like makeup brushes like companies will say like oh try our brushes and stuff and cause that happens to me and mm -hmm. I want them all uh, I'll absolutely. take them because you're going to find something in a there brush, you need. you'll always use it but sometimes I find myself with like extras and I'm like should I just be throwing out my old brushes and just replacing them because but I'm like these are still good I like I like I literally have a couple of makeup brunches and don't fucking read me and say, I know girl, I could tell um, <laughs> that I've had for like over 20 years, original Mac brushes mm -hmm. that I want. And I know they're animal hair. Sorry, but that's how they, that's how the brushes were back then. Uh -huh. But they're just like so good that you're like, it, it's just my brush. Like I can't find another shape. For sure. There's like some brushes that I, Ooh, cause I, I was telling you, I used to work at the Sephora inside JC Penney yeah. shout out. Um, and I remember on my last day when I was like, fuck this place. Like, I mean, I was like 19. Uh -huh. I was like, fuck this place. I don't want to work here anymore. I literally put in my notice the day of. Uh -huh. It was like that kind of brat mo move. Um, even worse move. But I mean, Statues of Limitations is passed by now. <laughs> I put on my brush belt, stuffed it with all my favorite brushes, put on my pea coat and hit it. Dang. And I still use those brushes today. Stankin' ass bitch. I know. I stole. Steven Hoor. I stole. <laughs> it was 10 years oh, ago, Oh, they had though. plenty of brushes. Girl, Girl bye. Girl, bye. Girl, fuck out of here. But yeah, I, like, if I lost some of those brushes, because I even like have like nail polish little markings on them, so uh -huh. like if some, if they end up in someone else's kit, I could clock it. Oh, I love that. I'm just crazy like that. Girl, people do. You know, that's always my thing, like backstage, like, I don't mind if people want to use things. I really don't. I know you're in a different environment because you're with people that um, you're with consistently. So you're like, I know what, what's happening here. Right. I know where we're shopping. I know where we're going to be. And you know that Who too. Who has what? Yeah. So I don't mind if somebody uses my shit, but I'm like, just put it back. You seem like you're like the ideal person to have backstage. I, You know what it is? I like to have like extras of everything. Uh -huh. And I don't know who I talked to recently, but uh, I like to have. Sonique. Sonique, the it's fragrance Sonique. and yeah. then the backup. <laughs> yeah. And the pins that you'll give to other girls. Yes. Not, not the pin. Yeah. Not my expensive ones from Nigel. The matte bl blonde yes. bobby pins. Absolutely. Those are the pins. Game I'm not going to argue the price. They come in like the little glass tint like, yep. with like the little hexagon. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. I want to use those only. 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 And if you need them, like, see, and that's the thing. Like, so like if we were here and you were like, uh, I need a pin because I know that you know that these are valuable items. Like it took a lot for me to even ask. Right. Yeah. So I would be like, it, that's different. But if it's some bug that just comes up, and they're like, girl, you got any pins? <laughs> if it's an alley cat. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a little alley cat, I'm like, oh, yeah, girl, you can get those pins over there. I'm like, fuck out of here. Yeah. There's, I think I saw some on the floor. Uh-huh. Because yeah. I've had to do it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So you have to do it too. Okay. I know you're a professional, but what is that one item that you catch yourself being like, girl, can I just borrow some? Um, uh, I, I know for sure what it is because I don't use them all the time and I do have plenty of them. Glue dots. I don't know if you're familiar with Like the with nail them. ones? The ones that, um, they go on the thing and a lot of people use them for heavy jewelry. Oh, okay. So I don't normally wear heavy jewelry that mm -hmm. much. Like I have a, a few things that are really nice, but I have too many necks for them. So they sit <laughs> in weird ways. Um, so I have to really be like positioned a certain way. And, and you're just like perform. uncomfortable. It's yeah. Like, it's like the metal is like pinching yeah. your neck skin. I feel so like. I need those glue dots and I usually will like roll a few off the box, put them in my thing, but inevitably I will run out and I'll have to ask someone. Yeah. What about you? What's an item? Mastix. Like the spirit gum, like wig glue. Oh, okay. That's always what I, cause I'm just the worst. And when I'm getting ready, I'm like, I can, I start really organized and really perfect mm -hmm. and it just comes a tornado every single time I get ready. Yeah. But like with the wig glue, I'm gluing my wig on, like I'm gluing the top and then I put it down. I don't twist it. Uh, so, and it's really liquidy. So I find myself knocking it with my shoulder or something and then it spills and then it's fuck. like, it's, it's like this super annoying product that they can't put on a plane for some reason. They like only can ship it ground. So it takes forever. 
It's annoying. That is annoying. Yeah. So Derek Barry has normally the girl who like fills me up. She has the big jug. Okay. So what? So when you're in that situation, like the glue knocking something over, when you were doing like the Vegas show, mm -hmm. are there ever moments? Because it, I'm assuming it's repetitious in uh, in format. But if somebody has to substitute in, mm -hmm. does that change the trajectory of the night? Like who goes or? Yeah. So we have like a set cast normally. There's like three months where people sign on for like the contract like they're going to be there for the three months but you can like gig out and because they have like um swings understudies i see um but the understudies actually are filling in for like they have like five tracks that they have to remember so of course there's something that's going to go like bitch you're in my spot you know um my favorite to come in is coco coco uh -huh. montrese is like she just makes everything so much better backstage she's such a cool person love her like she's so obsessed cool. with her and she just like she just she'll just say it like it is. And she will be on that live. Uh huh. And on she will that live. I feel like what I love about her is that whether it's like a major argument or one thing, if it if it bothers her, she's gonna speak on it. Oh yeah. And I admire that so much. I really really do admire that. Um, so when that happens, are is there ever a point where say like something gets knocked over and you're like supposed to be on and you're like late? Not you necessarily, but has someone been late or missed it or and you just are like, what's going on? We'll run with it. Does that happen? It's oh, live. For sure. I mean it's live. It's like a set um track too. So like the, oh, Okay, yeah. There's like no like there's no backup. No, there's no backup. It's like, oh I'm gonna I feel like I'm gonna do like a different number tonight. There's it's nothing not like happening. that. It's like we have the rights, you're doing this for that. like two years. Yeah. Um so of course something I mean I'm the kind of girl who's like if I know this show starts at 9 30 I wish I was better about this, but I'm probably gonna be ready by like 927. Okay. And that's like if I'm being a good girl that day. Mm -hmm. But that was the biggest show. It's different when you're on tour because it's like I'm a lot. I'm a lot more stressed. But when I'm in a familiar setting, uh -huh. it's a lot more lenient. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I uh, took myself to see the Vegas show. Uh, me and Davey went, and we were like, oh, we want to sit in the front. So we like went online and tickets, and it was honestly spectacular. I like love it is that. so. You were the, you were in the show. It's just absolutely beautiful. You can see how hard people really do work, and that's all about timing. It's all about. Because uh, the changes happen so fast, mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, sometimes I've seen people go live. I think maybe, I don't remember who went live, but they were live like backstage, just like changing for a second. And it's so interesting because you're thinking to yourself like, this is time. This is not a drag show where you just send the host out right. to talk about. Uh, she needs more time. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. And because of that, because it is such a type of show like that, obviously there's not a tipping environment. Um and I, I think when we do shows like bar shows, there is a tipping environment. Then you do like that type of drag, which is that's not the case. But then sometimes you do like private parties where people are like, oh, are they going to be tipping? Because it's that weird gray area where right. you're like, I don't really know. Like you're paying me well enough for that not to happen. Mm -hmm. um, what is your feeling on tipping culture? Because I know we talked about that. Oh, um, as if I will take the tips. I mean, of course, I'm going to take the tips. That's why I fucking put the makeup on, you know? Um, I just don't like the waivers. Oh. And I feel like that's probably the most obvious answer. Yeah. But if you're like holding the dollar and for some reason my hand's here, but you put it over there. Yeah. I'm punching it. I'm good. Not to even make it look like I'm better than that. I just like, I don't want to look like while I'm like trying to appear as like the grand dame, like I'm, Yeah. you know, pick me. Yeah, pick, pick me. me. Give me your dollar. I need it so bad. Well, my thing is like, I'm curious to know what people think, uh, what 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 else they think is going to happen. Like when the when the curtain opened and right. then I came out, like this is like going to be it. Like I'm not. It's not like if there's three dollars, I'll cartwheel, <laughs> and then if you throw in another one, I'll put I it in might, my mouth. Yeah, like I don't know what they think. I I was thinking about that at brunch the other day. It was a big group of people, like 15. One uh, girl, it was her birthday, and she was she was tipping. She had a dollar out for everybody. And I was at their table, and I'm doing my thing or whatever, and I realized, like, I've given them, like, a good verse of this. Like, I've honestly spent about 45 seconds 
of a six minute number just in this area. Mm -hmm. And I still have to go down three tiers and in two balconies. Oh, she's planning. So we got to go. Like, we need to make this happen. Mm -hmm. So I turned around and they someone like kind of grabs my shoulder and he's like, it's her birthday. And I was like, yes, bitch, it's your birthday. I love it. We're partying. And I turned back around. And he's like, no, no, it's her birthday. Ugh. And I said, uh, yeah, I know. Happy birthday. And I don't know. Like, did this they is like go? mid number? Yeah, this is in the middle of the Ugh. number. And, I'm, and I can see other people that are like, we came to brunch too. Like, yeah. And so I'm like, when you went onto the website, did you like put your reservation in and you're like, um, friend's birthday. And does it say on there like, don't forget to like tell the drag queen because if you tell them, they're going to like let you motorboat them. Mm -hmm. Or like if you say it two times, they'll stop what they're doing and they'll stand on their head. Like none of that is going to fucking happen. Yeah. It's just a show and they're going to do whatever it is that they want to do. And if you'd like to, uh, I don't know, donate to the tipping fund, that's lovely. But they're not going to just stay at your table. Like, what is... And this is a this was a homo that like is a gay man, uh, yeah. or appears as a man. Yeah, um, I'm I'm sad for them because they know they should know better. They should. They're be the, the ones, ones who are teaching the bachelorette group or yes. whatever how to act. They are like the line of defense that we have. Yeah, they're our ally in that yeah. scenario. I think it's so weird. Um, or putting it over someone's head. I hate. I I definitely have been this person because I learned some things over performing I hate that I ever put money in my mouth and I hate to see a queen do it uh -huh. and I'm like I know you didn't want to do that because uh -huh. I've been there uh -huh. it's just like let's just stop putting money in our mouth right We're, we don't need to no because what, what are you what are you going to do swallow it do I've that. seen that happen before where the queens go <laughs> I'm ew like, Jeez. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I mean, I you know, I've I've i in my 47 years, I've probably eaten too many like strangers' asses. Uh -huh. But I don't know that I want their currency in my mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's just like give me the just, cake, not the coin. Right. Right. That's the I can deal line. with there's a shot for the one. For the other, it's uh I, I don't know if that's the case. But what about when people are like, um, oh my gosh, like they'll tap you on the shoulder. It's my friend's birthday. Will you embarrass them? <sighs> yes, I would like to humiliate your friends so that they uh, have like, you know, PTSD and then they never return. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's always like the straight guy at the brunch uh -huh. who's like, you can tell they don't want to be there already. So, like, why are we making it even more uncomfortable right. for them? Why are we doing that? Yeah. Um, is life fair? Life's not fair. Why is life not fair? I mean, I've always known life's not fair mm -hmm. because I've just like grown up in a very unique setting where everyone looks so different, has different like learning capabilities and comes from a different background. I've kind of always known that just because life's not fair doesn't mean it's awful. Like you can make mm -hmm. it what you want to make it and like sure. get deal with the cards that you're dealt mm -hmm. um, and like maximize on it and like put a wig on it and look fierce. I'll put a wig on it. I'll put a wig on it. That's always the solution. If you went to 7-Eleven right now, would you get uh, something from the little roller bar, like the hot dog or the taquito? You're not like going to do that? I don't think so. You don't? Like, I don't think it? so. I do question it. Like, I love hot dogs. I love a hot dog so much, especially in the summer, especially at a barbecue, especially next to a pool, charred, God, that's plain, beautiful. toasted bun. Um, but I don't fuck with the... One on the roller for some reason. What about if you had to get a bag of chips? I'm probably going to get a tube of Pringles. Like <gasps> original. That's elite. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Because there's less broken ones. Yeah. They're, it's consistently. It's a fragile package. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. See, I remember back in the day, you would get Doritos. And there would always be like a few in there that were like extra, extra orange red. And those are the ones you have to lick before you eat them. Oh, my gosh. A Pringle has pretty consistent amounts of like powder on them so i don't know which pringle you would get a regular or original original or sour cream and cheddar and Barbecue. you have to lick them but you have to be gentle with your tongue because you could break them do you like cheese it's i love cheese it's oh my god i too. love better cheddars that's my fave i love that i love chicken and biscuit crackers we had those no well i feel like i've seen those elite okay elite cheese it's are like my like those are my fave. Mm -hmm. That's my fave snack. I really cannot eat them because I will eat the whole family right. size box. The two, you know, when you get the family size box at Costco and it comes uh -huh. with the two big bags, I can down that in a day. All of it. Um, but when I was younger, like when I was growing up, my 
I would have like a bowl of cheese that my mom would give me. And like I used to uh, line them out, like which one was the most toasty. Mm. You know, you can get extra toasted now. And now they have the Ooh. extra toasty. Elite. Yeah, I, I mean. used to save the extra toasties to the end and eat mm -hmm. all the, you know, regular ones and then go for the extra toasties. And now that there's the extra toasty flavor of cheese it Nabisco, you fucking did that. They did that. They, they did, did that. It's correct. And then that salt ratio is good, too. Because uh -huh. it's got that, it's a little bit bigger. I like that. Me too. Oh yeah, it's like a little like crystal. Uh huh. It yeah. looks like um, you know, when you get a big, a good baked potato and they roll it in salt. Yeah. I fucking. Oh, live. I love a twice baked potato. I do too. Ugh, but so what do you long. like to put on your baked potato? Do you like it loaded or just like butter? Or like baked? bacon, chive. Like the whole deal. Cheese. I'm not a sour cream girl. I don't. I've never okay. been a sour cream girl okay. for some reason. I like my food a little more like dry. Do you like ranch dressing with? Because you can, if you order a side salad and then you ask for extra ranch in the little silver tin, you can save that and then put that on your baked potato instead of sour cream. And it, or in addition to however piggy you are. Yeah. Yeah. I love ranch. Think of it. Ranch Think with pepperoni it. pizza is a slap. Ooh, that sounds really good. Do you put honey on your pizza? Some people do that now. Ooh, I'm sure if I was at like one of those artisanal pizza places, mm -hmm. I would try that. Uh, Hand-tossed, thin crust deep dish i believe there's a time for each and every one but if mm -hmm. you had to pick one what do i look like i'm gonna say deep dish interesting but i could be wrong i feel like i haven't even really had a proper deep dish this is probably so sad because i lived in chicago for three years uh -huh. um i'm a thin crust hoe thin crust i like yeah. it to, i like it to break I, I I don't mind ordering pizzas and pizza and having like a variety. Oh yeah. So yeah, you could have a little bit of. A, I would go with hand tossed usually, but um, we could do a variety, huh? You if haven't had a proper deep dish. It's so rich. It's like lasagna. It, it looks is. like lasagna. It is, and yeah. sometimes it's like, I don't know. I can feel the acid reflux like as I'm eating it. I yeah. Feel like it's gonna happen for sure. Let's take a break. I see. <sighs> I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel it, Mark. <laughs> You see your shoes. Do you want to? We we Delta. Stay tuned. These are sent in. People send them in. Postage stamp. No, 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 okay, no, 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 okay. no, no, no. I mean, like emails. Gotcha, gotcha, but gotcha. Mark will put them in like a thing. I mean, I love that. And then, it's like a whole element with the nails. And then he will. Um, Sometimes put a gift card in there and say that someone sent me a gift card, which Mark, by the way, I don't know if I told you this, but that a Barnes and Noble gift card that you put in there, like as a joke, I checked it and it still has $38 on it. And that belongs to you. Wow. But guess what I'm going to do? You're going to get a subscription to Redbook. I'm going to buy someone a birthday present with it and I'm going to put it in my box of gifts just in case <laughs> I forget a birthday. <laughs> you buy like two, you buy two things. Love. Yeah, you could do that. You have I used, to, right? I used to, I used to mop from Barnes & Noble growing up, too. I'm not mad. Yeah. I'm not mad at you, though. You've learned. You've given back to the world. Oh, I mean, I we stole the Starbucks. They gave us the drinks and we dipped out. Bye. 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 Nothing you should changed. ask for the money first. That's on you, not me. <laughs> that is on you, not me. <laughs> I have an honest face. Honest wig. You do. You uh. do. We are back with our extra <laughs> special guest with the honest face, the one and only Naomi Smalls. You do have an honest face. Um, you are a thieving bitch, which we've learned, <laughs> um, just from the jump till now. Yeah. That's fine. The, the, That's fine. the thieving painted. This the thing that is, like we said, they need to ask for the money before they give us the product. Right? Yeah. Put the money on the dresser. Come on now. Mm -hmm. This is the part of the podcast where people send in letters. Read me Delta. Love it. At gmail.com. Read me Delta! I used to say... If you have any comments, don't send comments. Like that, you don't <laughs> just, we'll, we've established that, yeah? Yeah. Don't, we don't want any comments. We just want <laughs> questions um, about, I don't know, flowers in your hair, flowers in the attic, um, being an buds. addict, like any of those things. If you have a question, we have an answer. Now, I don't know necessarily who wrote these, and I don't know if the subjects are like going to pertain to either one of us, but they're, people are concerned. They want to know. They didn't know you were going to be here. Oh, so the gag, you're the, the surprise. Um, oh, okay. This is a good question. Hi, Delta and guest. Who are your shadiest friends? 
and give examples. Ooh. Love, very Annika. I would say for sure, uh, and I'll answer this simply and quickly, because I think you might have some different friends. My <laughs> friend, Philip Dominguez, is the shadiest person I know. He is one of the most generous people I know. He is kind. He is smart. Mm -hmm. He's hardworking. He's handsome. He uh, is extremely shady. And the example I have of Philip is we were at a club one night and there was this, this person who um, was just kind of like coming on to him. Okay. And they were presenting as female. They were coming on to him and he was being very nice. And he was kind of like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested, but didn't say that. Just kind of like body languaged over like, I'm good. And the person just like kept going on. And finally they were like, you're a bitch. And like, Ugh. was just being mean. So then they came back over and after they got drunk and they started to try to be nice again. Mm. And they had this scarf on and they kept like doing this and like, and this this person, just full disclosure, without shaming anybody, this person was a cross-dresser. Okay. Uh, probably a quote-unquote, like, straight identifying cross-dresser. Cross but they thought that, th that Philip was there, like, admiring. And Philip was not. <laughs> and so they said, oh, sorry, I was just adjusting my scarf. And Philip goes, I think it makes your necks look so beautiful. <gasps> and we were like, oh, not your necks. Like, it's just that little subtle bit that he will throw out there. He does it all the time. Like he will find, and he does, won't do it to strangers just out of nowhere. It's right. over, if someone's being Provoked. a cunt, he will find a way to be a cunt back without raising his voice Love. or saying anything that anyone else can really pick up on. They have to walk away and they're like, Oh shit, I just got dragged. Yes. I live. Love that. I, and I also have a ton of drag queen friends that are shady gash asshole cunts mm -hmm. um, that I don't like, but I, they don't deserve any airtime. <laughs> Not today. Not today. What about you? Um, I think that Kim Chi is probably my okay shadiest friend. Um, is she subtle doubt. as well? Yes, she's very subtle. Um, I think the first time we met, in her own way, she was being shady, and I I knew she was going to be that girl because she asked me, um, "What what Beyonce mega mixes do you do back home?" Fuck. So she just genreed me real fast. Wow. But I fell in love with her in that moment because I was just like, oh, uh -huh. I see what you're doing. Uh -huh. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, my friend Michael, uh -huh. he makes a lot of my looks. Uh -huh. He's definitely leans more towards like the glass half empty kind of li lifestyle. Live. And so he hates everything. Live. And I love it. Love like, Michael. Like so kind, so caring. Hates everything. Yeah. 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 Love. I speak that language for sure, though. I love that. I'm kind of a hater, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's weird is that when people, I, I don't know if it happens to you, but I do have people that will, um, they're definitely like supportive and they're definitely like uh, encouraging and they they listen to podcasts or whatever. But it, it, it does, it's a bit disheartening for me when people will go, bitch, they'll send me a message, bitch, read me. Or they'll order a cameo video because I'm mm -hmm. on the cameo mm -hmm. service. And they'll be like, can you read my friend? And I'm like, I don't know, like maybe there are some sound bites or something, but I don't know anyone that consistently comes to me and be like, girl, you always read everybody. I'm like, right. I don't, you mean when I complain about stuff? Because I don't go up to people and read them. Like I, I know exactly how that feels when a stranger comes up and just starts talking shit. We all do. But it just seems weird when, when that I that I must have given enough of an impression to people, and I feel like I'll always be sort of fighting that, like this impression that you are bitterly cruel to everyone. And right? I'm like, really? That's not me. I feel bad because I'm like I'm trying to look back, like I'm looking back <laughs> at TV and posts, and I'm like, when did I go up to somebody and go, girl, you need to get red, girl, I need to let you have? It. Did I tell you about that? I don't know doing that. Yeah. Like, I, I know when we've all seen our seasons of Drag Race, like, we know what happens and we know, like, definitely, are you the same? Per like, would you respond after seeing yourself on TV? Would you respond that same way if you knew what it looked like? Oh, probably not. Like, right. of course not. Like, do I think that people are, like, highly sensitive? Yes. Do I Did I think then, like, oh, maybe you're being too sensitive? And then now I'm like, no, they were being as sensitive as they should have been because they weren't prepared for that, even though they asked for that. Right. 
You know what I mean? But like, not many people can speak candidly. Right. You know, so people sometimes get a little shocked by that. Or like, when people ask you, well, did you know, is this what you think of me? And you're like, yes. Yes. Is this is what I think of you? If you're asking me. If you're asking, you can't be mad at the. Right. You know? Right. Do you get do you get people who you think like sort of uh, misinterpret who you are? Like maybe they think that you're you, because you are, uh, pre, you know, you present like a model, like maybe you're cold or. You know, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, there's a, I think there's a huge uh, misconception on uh, people who think that if you care about your looks, you're going to be like this, right. like, vain right. diva bitch. But honestly, I think I'm just like a dork in a wig. And I just spend a lot of time in the mirror. Yeah, I mean, people, you know, uh, they, they have this impression also, too. I mean, you know. We've all get we all get clumped into things like these are the fashion queens. Right. These are the this. These are the that. And then whoever the standout is at that moment, that means that everyone you've already put in that category behaves that way. Right. The dancing queens only do this. And and you could never be the dancing queen because I already said you're the fashion queen. Right. I already told you what you are. See, the thing at the end of the day, I just like to be a drag queen. I've right. always just wanted to be a drag queen because I love the art of drag and I love performing on stage as a drag artist. But like I've never necessarily considered myself to be a fashion queen. I'm definitely not like like a a dancing queen. I can't do the cartwheels and all that jazz. But I just like to do drag, and I don't think there's like anything wrong with that. Now yeah. I think that you have to have like a um a, a shtick, a gig. Like uh -huh. you have to be like, oh, but do you sing live? All that jazz. But there's just so much skill and talent that goes into being an impressive drag queen. Right. I agree. I agree. I think that is so true. And I think everybody has, I mean, variations of what they, by the way, this letter is inside this purse that Love. Uh, Mark does this. Um, I don't know. What are these purses called, Mark? Luar. Luar purse. Lux. It's uh, luxurious. Uh, I just, yeah, I think it's just so weird. Like, you should be able to do a little bit of everything and, and shine however you want to shine at that time. Yeah. I mean, you'll have some things that are like, you're better at or or somebody else is better at but i don't think it makes it more valuable it just makes it differently valuable i think i, I think do love nice. though that quote that came out recently oh that's how oh. that's how people do their their letters now Ooh, that's some sticky spit mm -hmm. do you lick the envelope or no you wet, um you wet I, your finger or like wet i have a i will so whenever i send something like uh like a letter to someone or a, a card I will spray it with perfume, but then I'll spray yes. the adhesive with perfume as well. Oh, so, that so I don't have to lick stick. it. Because I've cut my tongue before. Oof. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Dear Delta and Fierce Competition. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm, let's switch. I'm taking the gig. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've never even considered describing myself as, quote, having a fire under my ass, end quote. But Drag mm. Race cast members really seem to love saying it been there is it a production thing should i have a fire under my ass what is it like watching people you know say that on television thank you for considering this handwritten letter yours delilah smell delilah delilah smell, smell. um i like that now i understand why they said in fierce competition because mm -hmm. it's like that it's very that like <laughs> <laughs> right when they that. say that like no, it's, it's a new day in the workroom and i've got a fire under my ass i need these girls to know that i came here to be here and i'm going uh -huh. to impress the judges and this crown is mine right yeah there's like a quota of just things that are kind of oversaid and i'm guilty of being the girl who's like i lip synced last week so now i've got a fire under my ass i'm gonna prove them wrong why do we do that well this is the difference um because i always feel like if you if you want to be on Drag Race, you definitely need to uh, watch season one through whatever the current season is. Mm -hmm. Watch the untucks, listen to podcasts of people talking, so you can understand what mistakes have already been made and addressed. Right. So you don't make those mistakes. So, um, whatever those are, like like you said, the quote or whatever, um, don't do those again. Like. If somebody says, like, stop making a big deal about the fact that you don't know how to sew and just quietly go over and start making your garment with hot glue. Yeah. Because they, I don't know why, I, I really still to this day <laughs> don't understand the, I, and as somebody who does know how to sew, but doesn't actively sew because my partner does, um, 
I don't understand why it's so impressive and such a requirement to know how to sew. I do. I, what I, what I don't under, I, I do understand that you need to have a, a garment walk down the runway, but it's really none of your goddamn business how I made it. The fact is that it's made and it's here. Right. You didn't tell me it had to have a 10 year longevity on it. I just need to present to you a, a, a look. We create illusion. We create the impression. We talked about painting for right here. You saw it. You liked it. Now fuck off. Like, I just don't understand. I, what I also have never understood is why drag race is a finishing school for people. Mm. It's not. It's supposed to be a competition. If you're no good, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But don't come here and go, you've really developed in this last episode. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to hear that I took your come advice. Fierce. I don't want your advice. I want you to say you were not good. Mm -hmm. You need to go. Don't tell me. You know what? I think as long as you really focus on dancing the next time you come here, you could be. No. Yeah. No, not anymore. That's not what it is. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that's kind of what I was saying to street cred. It was a lot yeah. more cutthroat back then. Yeah. I, I I believe. Yeah. So if like you were if you're a booger, you were gonna go the fuck out. Or you'd be called out on it. And it's okay to it's okay to admit to somebody like, bitch, I didn't cut it. Mm hmm You know, we were I don't know who I was talking to recently about the fact that like when oh, I was Sonic, I think. You know, you used to just go with like what you had kind of thing. Right. And there was a transitional period where people were like who watched Drag Race and went, no, I'm not doing that. I'm getting some stuff made. Like, I want to borrow some stuff. I want to look good. Like, I want to wear wigs that I've not worn at the bar. I right. want to look great. Everything fresh. Package. A and new that's package. how it should be. It's mm -hmm. your package. Um, but when we do look at, like, older seasons where you're like, oh, bitch, I already saw her wear that at the club. <laughs> like, she bless. Like, I mean, but at that time, I mean, at least speaking from my experience, I had no drag. Right. So it was like... I had what I what I had on the show that was literally my drag wardrobe, right? And I think that um, that's kind of what it's coming into is when you don't do drag for such a long time before you go on, you don't necessarily have a wardrobe to pick and choose from, and you don't have your point of view really, right? Yeah, the kids. So just bring it. Just, I I say, I mean, listen, you know, every year it's like. Who who's gonna be on this year? And you always hear the rumblings. And I know no one's everyone signs an NDA and nobody talks. Bitch, everybody's talking about everything. Oh girl, they asked me, but everything. I'm just everybody, like, I'm busy. Everybody made wigs for everybody. <laughs> everybody, I, I my my phone still fucking rings. I may not be combing uh, everybody's hair, but there are people that call and they're like, Can you make me that cream puff wig that you wear? Because mm -hmm. somebody might need that. Yeah. And then somebody else calls somebody else and they're like, Can you do like a full human, gorgeous? Because that's what they do best. Right. And the same with clothes. So, uh, you know, those things go out there, but it's like at this point, then just have the show about people who've like only been doing drag a year. Or I, I always thought beyond a challenge, I would love to see like a, a season of people that were on the show that actually bring a new entertainer with them. Mm, and they're yes. like, I'm returning with a new entertainer right. that we, I'm pushing them along. That, I'm their mom. That's kind of like drag you a times bit, yeah. 10, you know, yeah. like having your competitor compete. While you're like, yeah, kind of like the I loved the drag wizard. You. Me too. It was so. It it's was a so miracle. Different. Yeah, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> I'm always gonna be a fan, regardless. I mean, I oh, watch Drag Race. It's the biggest pageant. Yeah, it the is. Love pageants, you know. It is. It is the biggest drag pageant because of the audience, because of the budget, because of the yeah. echelon of people who are running it. You know, so mm -hmm. like. I'm always gonna watch. I'm always gonna be a fan. I was a fan before I was a drag yep. queen. So, well, and I think I'm. I think too. I mean, I think everybody that has been on Drag Race, whether you actively do drag still or not, I think everyone has sort of this um, understanding when they watch that they're like, I'm gentle now because I'm gentle with those people on there because I know. Yeah. What they, they've gone through. What they've gone through. Maybe they just did interviews. Maybe they haven't eaten yet. Maybe they're practicing something like. If you've been in, and I and I don't call everybody sister, but there, but there is a level of like uniqueness to that group of people. For sure. No matter what season you were on, no matter what branch, it's a very taxing thing. For sure. But it's sickening. It is sickening. It's sickening and it provides I the still got the bunions to prove it. You do? Oh, you don't yeah. Have bunions. Is it bunions or corns where you like your feet are bruised? Do you pop the corns and feed the children? That's sick. <laughs> thank you for being here. Well, thank this you is so fun. Much for having me. This is really fun. Huge fan. I'm the fall fell. Fan. Do you know what that is? The fall fell. The fall fell. Yeah, the fall fell. That's yeah. like one of my favorite Delta moments. What is that? You were like on a. Uh, you were a guest on FPR, and uh -huh. someone sent in like a fan photo, uh -huh. and you and Raven are dragging them, and you go, 
You can't wear that wig. The fall fell. Oh, I do remember that. That's a fun show. You've done that show before. Yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah. But you, you just reading that because they asked. Yeah. They how do asked, I look? They asked. They asked. That's the fall like, fell. That's such a good show. I always, uh, you know, I should probably, shouldn't throw this out there because then it'll get stolen from me. But if we could do our own. I always thought that Fashion Photo Review, which is sickening and has always had sickening guests, deserves to have a follow-up show, right? Where you look at the outfits and you say, okay, so now we're moving on to that. Remember like drag, there'd be drag race and there would be untucked. Mm -hmm. There would be fashion photo review and unfucked. Where you would say, <laughs> this is what fixes the outfit. This is what you should do. Oh yeah. And give them an idea and go, here you go. And it would be like, I don't know, AI created or whatever. And it's oh, like, we could definitely do that now. Right? Here's all the elements of what you were wearing. And I think that'd How be How to fierce. fix it. Unfucked. Yeah. The love. show after the show. I love it. I don't know. Maybe you'll do it with me sometime. Would love. Maybe not. Maybe I could just fuck off, which is fine. <laughs> I really want a hot dog now that you were talking about that. And I'm not trying to get Jennifer Coolidge about it. I'm just saying, like, legit want a hot dog. Oh, but it needs to be, like, charred. How do you like your hot dog? I like it when there's the the grill marks on it. Uh -huh. So I want to see it, like, the skin on the outside swelling and puffing. The the boiled hot dogs, I do not get I it. Want that. I, don't want, I that. want it cooked on I the outside. I want it cooked. Do you like to have a bratwurst? Would you do that? Yeah, yeah, I would like when it's like cut. You want it all. I want it all. I want it all too. She really, she likes hot dogs. She <laughs> likes hot dogs. <laughs> I'm surprised at that sound. It was sickening though. I don't even know how it did. People like honesty and like that you honestly eat hot dogs that way, and people like it. Oh yeah. Do you want macaroni salad or potato salad on the side if you're at a barbecue? Uh, macaroni salad. Ma See, I do too. The uh, like bow tie. That's my favorite. Oh, you want like a pasta salad? Oh, is that not? Yeah, I guess that's not macaroni salad. Well, I guess I think. Well, it depends on your family. I always think of macaroni salad as like mayonnaise based, but then mm -hmm. a bow tie is like some kind of vinaigrette with you, like. That's what I you want. like. That yeah. I like them both. Yeah, I like to eat pasta salad or macaroni salad with chips instead of a utensil. That way, I get more carbs. Mm. You can do that. You oh, so you just like scoop. You scoop it, yeah. And you don't you you reduce your footprint as well. That's how I am at Chipotle with like when I get a salad bowl. Uh huh. Like I'll just eat it with like uh -huh. chips. Some people say since you've never had Taco Bell, maybe you could try this the first time you go. You get um, you order a nacho, but you ask for the chips on the side. So they Ooh. make everything as a dip, and then you just use the chips. I've never done it, but I always feel like if I ask, they're gonna be like, "Oh, you saw it on TikTok." Well, we don't do that here. Oh gosh. You don't. We don't do that here. People get mad at the TikTok drop. They do. I have, um, for some reason, I have a lot of my exes and even people I've currently slept with. Uh, I've worked at Starbucks. Oh, okay. I don't know what it is about me that just like attracts barista, but um, barista energy is different. I think they come, I like barista energy. They come in with the TikTok. Can you make the like baby Yoda frappuccino? Uh huh. I saw it on TikTok. Uh huh. And I think that they get kind of annoyed at that. They probably do because they're probably like, "Can't you just order a cup of coffee? Can't you just order like the things? Like, just tell me what you want added to your drink, and I'll do What's it." What's on the menu? Yeah. Is, speaking of that, what is on your drink? Just in case. Oh my cold. Uh, cold my star drink. my Starbucks. It's just cold brew. Just Venti cold brew. cold brew black. Oh, simple. That's it. Oh. When I first started drinking coffee, I didn't necessarily like this taste of coffee, so I was like a white chocolate mocha girl, and then I developed like a really bad like dairy mm. intolerance, mm -hmm. so I couldn't be doing that every day. Have you ever crapped yourself in a restaurant? In a restaurant? No, but I probably sharted. No, oh, that happens. Which yeah. is like the same shit. A same idea, yeah. Yeah, just same with, idea. with a little like impact. Um, if you had a bakery item at Starbucks along with the drink, what would it be? Oh, I like the uh, banana bread. The banana bread's good. Did you ever have the key lime little square? No. <laughs> is it? Is it she not, is she not around anymore? Which one I tell you? <laughs> they said 375 and it was like that. <laughs> it was like that, but it was fucking good. So I just ordered like four. <laughs> it's fine. I pieced it together. It was fine. You make your own little like section of I'm not of complaining about the price either because listen, I'm not going to cook it. I mean, come on. I don't even want to know how much money I spent in Starbucks. Over All of the years. it. All I of don't. It. Yeah. I don't even get paid anymore. Just give me the gift card. Yeah. But two, uh, the um, 
that got rid of the almond croissant, which I, you know, we could talk to someone about that. You you could mention that for me. Yeah. We we miss the almond croissant. And we also I I've got a list for you, Starbucks, of sugar-free flavors that I would love to see. And um, I would uh, I would love to share those with you. They're on my Instagram, or you can contact me. Um, I work with uh, I make Naomi's makeup artist. Uh, if you did not know, and um, I I will be there uh, to help in any capacity to facilitate uh, Naomi's greatness. And the loss of cinnamon dolce. And the loss of cinnamon dolce. All right. Sugar free. Anyway. Sugar free. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for God, having me. I could just me. sit here and like talk about stupid shit. <laughs> Why? Syrups. Why? We talked about that like five times and I still bring it up. I know, I love. It's not helping anything. Oh, seriously, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. You come back, I hope. Please. Yeah? Yeah, I'll sprawl we'll out. Some, we'll have to do something like different. I don't know what. A taste test, maybe. I don't know. We're going to do Unfucked. Unfucked. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll get Unfucked. It's already in the cards. Thank you for listening to Very Delta. You can search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every Monday. Uh, and you can find us here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel. Also, a special hello to everyone watching the talk show on YouTube. We love you. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the support. <laughs> uh, keep checking us out there. You can also send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. Questions about, I don't know, whatever happens to you in your life or something that we've talked about. No comments because we don't give a shit about those. Um, <laughs> but you can type them still. Like, you know, people are reading them. You can interact. That's fine. Um, also, you can give the show a follow on Instagram and TikTok at Very Delta. Because if you're not, you're really only getting half the Delta. And you need more than that. Join me next week right here for another episode of Very Delta. Until then, keep things very, very... Delta. On the next episode of Very Delta, bitch, it's Raya Literary. Who we be? Who a facita na 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 di di di. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, aka Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. Hi, it's me, Delta Work. Do you like to see me go off? Well, if you do, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, because we don't want you to miss any of our mom podcast exclusive content.